The broadcast ministry of Christ Way Fellowship brings you victory for today. Exalting the Savior, evangelizing the seeker, and equipping the saint. Committed to the principle that you can have victory today and every day through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And now, here's your host, Pastor Wayne Duncan. Well, hello and welcome again to Victory for Today. Thank you for tuning in. It's always such a joy for me to be able to welcome you to this broadcast and to share with you for a few minutes from the Word of God. Now, we have been in the general topic of preparing ourselves spiritually for the new world order. And as we have been doing that, we've been studying in various places, but primarily we've been in the book of James over in the New Testament. And so if you have your copy of the Word of God nearby, would you open it to James chapter 5. James chapter 5, and we're going to begin today at verse 7. Now last week we were talking about uh, the paragraph just above this in which it seems that the Holy Spirit has moved the apostle, or has moved uh, the pastor, I should, I'd rather say Pastor James, to uh, uh, say some words, harsh words, against oppressors. And uh, throughout this book, he has been speaking to believers, but in this paragraph just prior to the one we're going to study today, he is speaking a word out against those that have oppressed people and a strong word of condemnation. Not anything new in the Word of God. This happened quite often in the Old Testament with the prophets. They would be speaking directly to God's people and then the Holy Spirit would move on the prophet and he would shift his attention to uh, some nation that had oppressed the people and pronounce condemnation on them. And we learned some valuable lessons, I think, last week from our study about about money and about how we're to earn our money, how we're to regard it and so forth. If you miss any of the broadcasts here and you want to get caught up or if you're new to Victory for Today, let me just tell you that you can reach us uh, at uh, victoryfortoday.com on the internet and uh, on, the, on the left hand side of your screen, if you look up close to the top there, you'll see a selection called Archive. And you go there and there will be a little box that will come up and you can scroll through about, oh, I think it's over 200 messages and talks on there. Now, I've even gone back and uh, taken some old cassette tapes and uh, put them on there from years ago. I, I posted one the other day from uh, 1986, I think. So, you know, you've you got a whole lot of different things you can, you can uh, tune into there on our website. Our website's not a typical church website. It's a ministry website. And you'll find a lot of things on victoryfortoday.com that will be helpful to you, I'm sure, including a way to get in touch with us. And uh, I will give you some information a little bit later on about uh, how you can get a Bible free from us. So keep that in mind. And that's victoryfortoday.com. But we're also on uh, lightsource.com. And we're on oneplace.com and sermon.net. And so through the Internet, we have been able to reach out to people literally all over the world. So just a little little commercial in there, I guess, about the website and about the internet and so forth. But let's get to our Bible study now. After this paragraph about those that have been oppressing uh, God's people, oppressing people in general, and the condemnation that has been pronounced on them, he comes now, he, he turns his attention back now uh, to God's people, and I would say from the way this reads, uh, they have been subject to, to this oppression. Let's just read this together. Verse 7. He says, Therefore be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and the latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. 
Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we all we count them blessed who endured. Uh, you have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. But above all, brethren, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your no be no, lest you fall into judgment. Now, when we read from our English Bibles, the translation, the, the translation work that's been done, no matter what translation you may be using, the Old King James Version, the New King James as we do here, the New International, whatever translation you may uh, use, uh, they're bringing forth a language uh, that's the Koine Greek in the, in the New Testament, and, and as you make a transition from one language to another, sometimes some of the meaning, some of the nuance, some of the, the uh, what's behind that word that you're translating doesn't really make it over into our language. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so important for those that are going to teach and preach the Word of God that they study the original languages, the Hebrew and, and the uh, Greek. Well, right here we've got an example of that. And, and it's this word, patience. Now, when we think of the word patience, to me, that word is, uh, it's just so, uh, it, it's too calm a word. It, it doesn't have the strength and the power in it that the words that we find here translated patient and patience uh, really have. For instance, this first uh, verse here, therefore be patient, the word that's used there is the word for long-suffering, for long-suffering. I, I think it was, uh, I think it was Joyce Myers that I heard one time interpreting this, and she said, now let me tell you what long-suffering means. It means long-suffering. <laughs> well, well, it's a word that uh, is a much stronger word than just our word that we use uh, normally in our conversation of patient, like we say to a child, well, just be patient, your turn's coming. No, it's more than just waiting for your turn. Being patient in this sense, this macrothemia is the word that's behind this. It's, it's a word that has to do with a, a long period of endurance, of having a strength that keeps you from, uh, let me see if I have this written down here, yeah, refuse, a refusal to give way under pressure as the self-resistant which enables the sufferer to refrain from hasty retaliation. So as you're going through times of oppression, we might say that this, this particular part of our, our study could be called doing right when you've been done wrong. And so let's keep this in mind, doing right when you've been done wrong. It's, it's the opposite, macrothemia, this being patient is the opposite of being quick-tempered or retaliating. Now remember the section that we just went through here is about being oppressed. And so this is a serious matter. It's just not getting your own way. This is, this is people that are going through difficult times, difficult struggles. The original recipients of the, the book that we call James were people that had lost everything they had because of their faith in the Lord Jesus. And not only that, they'd been pushed out, they've been scattered. And so they've lost their livelihood, their homes, they've been exiled just because of their faith in Jesus. And so this is a word to them and it's certainly a word to us today. And sometimes we are so quick-tempered. It's a sad thing that we find ourselves in that situation. I was thinking about how easy it is for us to lose our temper uh, with the people right there in our own home, under our roof. I guess of all people in the earth, you know, you'd lose your temper with your own family quicker than you do with a total stranger. And that, uh, that's, kinda, that, that's a sad thing. But you shouldn't lose your temper either place, uh, I'm trying to say. But 
Uh, let's remember that the people right there in our home, these are the people that we love with all of our hearts, but also the, the home is, is just a little small version of the whole world to us. And so we need to learn the lessons of being long-suffering, being patient right there in the home, and then take what we learn there on outside. He uses here the illustration of the farmer. Uh, we know uh, here in our community there's a lot of farms, a lot of people that raise corn, and a lot of people that raise cotton here, and they wait for the rains, and then they wait for the rains, and they wait for, it's been a long, long dry summer here in northeast Louisiana and lots of other places in our country. And so rain is a very welcome thing. And he speaks here about that patience, that long suffering, that being, that waiting, waiting it out. He's using the farmer as an illustration of those that, uh, that are going under difficult and, and trying times. And we're all going through some difficult and trying times in one form or another. Our, uh, our country's going through difficult times right now. The economy being what it, it is. The, the culture war that's going on uh, between those that seem to want to just drag our, our uh, culture down into the depths of immorality and the, those that are standing for, righteous, for, uh, for righteousness. And there's a struggle going on there. So we've got these battles and these struggles going on on many levels. Let's be long-suffering through this. Let's don't lose it. Let's don't, uh, let's don't forsake it. Don't just walk away from the fight, but let's be sure that we are carrying things on in a way that brings glory to God and not just a right uh, end to what we're pursuing. It's, uh, I, I think there's a a misconception sometimes on the part of, of people that when you become a Christian that suddenly everything is going to be just all right and perfect and shady downhill all the way it's just going to be an easy life and that's just not true uh, that's a wrong expectation when you come into the Christian life Jesus warned about that he said if they treat the master this way how are they going to treat the servants uh, go over here to first Peter and in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 18, he says, Be submissive to your masters with all fear, but not only to the good and gentle, but to the harsh. For this is commendable if because of conscience toward God one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently, but when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. For to this you were called, because of Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps, who condemned, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously." You know, when I think about Christians going through struggles and difficult times and uh, because of the faith, there, there's one family that comes to my mind uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a very uh, repetitive way, and that is the Ten Boom family. I don't know if many of you now uh, really know who I'm speaking about when I speak of Corey Ten Boom, but this was a family in Holland that during the time uh, of the Nazi occupation, the German occupation of Holland, uh, they were part of the underground that uh, smuggled Jewish people out of the country and kept them away from the hands of the Nazis that were taking them off to concentration camps. And at a point, uh, they were discovered and the whole family was arrested. Everyone in the family died in captivity except for Corey who lived to tell the story. She became a, an evangelist, a trap for the Lord, she called herself. She wrote a book entitled The Hiding Place, telling their story. And one of the things that just uh, stood out to me and still does to this day and challenges my heart is the way she describes the way her sister, Betsy, uh, would respond in a concentration camp of Ravensbrück when she would be so harshly treated. I should say when they were being so harshly treated. And she would say to Corey, don't hate, don't hate, Corey, don't hate. And when she was 
being uh, abused, when she was being beaten, she would not retaliate. She would accept it, and she would take it uh, like a Christian should. I remember uh, when uh, earlier in the film and in the book when, uh, when it came out that what was going on between uh, the Nazis and uh, the Jewish people, what was happening to them, and uh, Papa Ten Boom said, I, I pity them. I pity them. He wasn't talking about the Jews. He was saying he was pitying the Germans. He was pitying the Nazis because of he, his, his knowledge, his settled position that God is going to judge all. That God is going to judge all. That's something that's repeated over and over here uh, in this passage that we, that we have read. The Lord is at the door. He says, he also says that the judge is, is right at the door. He's coming. And, and dear friend, listen, if we're going to have this, this endurance, this kind of patience that's being spoken of here, uh, we need to have uh, in view the big picture. Now, what do I mean by the big picture? The big picture is this. This life is not what it's all about. There's an eternity out there that's waiting for all of us. And every one of us is going to give an account before the righteous one, before the righteous judge. And so when we are suffering, when times come of suffering, uh, I don't know that anyone I'm speaking to right now, at least not in this country, has suffered greatly for their faith yet. It may come. That's one of the things that we're trying to impress upon uh, each of us, including myself, to be prepared uh, for the new world order because things are changing so rapidly right now uh, and, and the way the culture is going, uh, it could be that right here in this country that's our nation's motto is in God we trust and has been uh, founded on godly principles, it may just come about that we are going to find ourselves in difficult circumstances because of our faith in Christ. So let's determine right now that we're going to be long-suffering, that we're, we're going to, to practice this thing of patience. You know, it's an interesting thing when you go over to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we find there where, where love is described. It's not defined, but it's described. The first thing it says there is love is patient. Love is long-suffering. He said, be long-suffering till the coming of the Lord. Just like the farmer waits. The farmer waits for the, the, the early rain and the latter rain. Let's wait for the Lord. He's the righteous judge. He goes on and he says in verse 8, be also patient. This is a different word for patient here. This is, has a different connotation. Then he says, establish your heart for the coming of the Lord is near. For the coming of the Lord is near. That's that big picture that I'm talking about. Now the word that's used here for patience, it has this, this meaning behind it. A steadfastness, a constancy, endurance. And the New Testament characteristic of a man who is not swerved by his uh, deliberate purpose, from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. So he says there, be patient. This is a different word. And then he uses the word establish or establish your hearts. Let me share with you the meaning behind that word. Here we go. To make stable, to place firmly, to set fast, to fix, to strengthen, to make firm, to render constant, to confirm. Uh, this is uh, the same word that's used, if you'll remember back over in Luke chapter 22, when Jesus is speaking to Peter, and Peter's talking about how, oh, he's going to stand with the Lord through thick and thin. And the Lord reminds Peter, or says to Peter, rather, that, that the devil has sought to sift him like wheat, but that the Lord had prayed for him. And he says, And when you turn again to me, strengthen your brethren. And this is that same word, strengthen your brethren. Now, Peter was that, we just read from First Peter. 
And those words there from 1 Peter didn't sound much like the Peter that we find in the New Testament. Something had happened to Peter. <laughs> He'd been through quite an experience between the time we find him in the New Testament as a sort of a fellow that uh, opens his mouth and changes his feet every once in a while. The, the guy that's the upstart that has the quick word and, and very slow and, and uh, on delivery. But by the time Peter had been through what he had been through, the denying of the Lord, the forgiveness of the Lord, the filling of the Holy Spirit, the experiences that he had had, he had changed dramatically. May we change also. He says here, be patient, be patient and establish, set firmly, get your heart set. And dear people, we don't wait until we face trials to set our hearts straight. We set our hearts straight now. Now these are commandments that we might say that James is giving here by the Holy Spirit. He says, be patient in verse 7. He says in verse 8, establish your heart. And in verse 9, look at what he has to say there. He says, do not grumble. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Do not grumble. Do not grumble uh, uh, against one another. Speaking between brethren here about grumbling, about speaking down, about speaking evil of, about this, actually the word in its very basic meanings to, to groan or to sigh. It's, a, it's just speaking down, talking down on people, speaking evil of people. Dear folks, let's don't let that be in our church fellowship. <laughs> I heard a story about the pastor that announced the church vote. He said there's 40 yeas seven nays, and one over my dead body. <laughs> well, dear people, we're going to have disagreements in church. There's things we're not going to agree on because you know why? We're people. We're still people. We're still walking in the flesh. We're still influenced by things. Here in this world, the devil is very busy. Uh, look, uh, he, he is he's more he's he's busy in the church as he is he is anywhere else trying to stir up trouble let's don't let that uh, take hold in our fellowship and our feelings about toward one another let's realize love conquers all and so we want to to let Jesus have firm control of us and the way we do that is by filling our hearts and minds with the word of God and by allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us step by step as we walk in the Spirit so that we don't fulfill the deeds of the flesh. Don't be that one that says, over my dead body. <laughs> I, remember, uh, uh, I remember one time in particular, we, have a, we had a marquee out in front of our church property and we could change the sign to say whatever we wanted to. And I remember putting on there one time, uh, no matter what, no matter what the question, Jesus is the answer. And that was a, a catchy little thing to say. But uh, you know what the truth is? Uh, Jesus really is the answer. Uh, he may not give you a definitive answer to what struggle you may be going through or what's happening in your life, but he's still the answer. You see... He, he is that strength and that power that helps us to make it through even when we don't have an answer. Amen. Do you have Jesus in your heart? Have you invited Christ to come in and be your Lord and Savior? You know, if you've never done that, you can do it right now. If you're willing to turn your life over to God, if you're willing to change your life, if you've seen the error in your ways, as we say sometimes, and you're willing to step over and get on a different path, a path that leads to life and to God, to His way of living. I'd invite you to do that right now. And you can seal the deal through prayer. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. It's what the Scripture says. must be willing to admit that we're sinners. We're all sinners. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God must be willing not only to admit that we're sinners, but also to receive Christ as our Lord and as our Savior. And we do that after we have admitted and believed, then we confess the Lord with our mouths. The way we seal the deal, as I said a moment ago, is 
through prayer. This is just a simple way of, of making our intentions known and specifically speaking them out. Let me just share a little prayer with you. And I'm going to give this to you in just pieces. And so you follow along after me and repeat this prayer after me if it's your heart's desire to receive Christ. Would you do that? All right, let's pray. Lord Jesus, just say the prayer after me if this is your heart's desire. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Lord and Savior. Come into my life. Sit on the throne in my life. And make me the kind of person you want me to be. I pray in your name. Amen and amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to get in touch with me. Either go to our website, victoryfortoday.com, or write to me at Victory for Today, P.O. Box 250, Fairbanks, Louisiana, 71240. Now, if you're listening by radio, Jim Stewart will give that to you uh, at the end of the broadcast. If you're watching, it'll be on your screen for about the last 30 seconds that we're on the air. Uh, I'd also like to offer you a free Bible package. It'll have a Bible a little Bible study in it, and three other little booklets, and a DVD entitled, Who is Jesus? You can have either the Bible like I've been using. It's the New King James. It's a sturdy paperback, and uh, you've seen me using it here on the program. Uh, I'll give you one of those. Or if you'd rather have the New International Version, which is very easy to read. That's the 84 edition. Or if Spanish is a better language for you, I'll send you a Spanish Bible and all the materials that come with it are in Spanish. So please uh, let me know. Just uh, write to me and uh, or go to the website and order your Bible materials. Let me know if you pray to receive Christ. That's very special. I want to know about that if you did. And I want to uh, guide you in what steps to take next. So uh, please get in touch with us. Let us know that you're watching Victory for today and that uh, uh, it's being a blessing to you. That's, that's such a, an, a thrilling thing for us to get mail, to get email or snail mail as they call it, and uh, from people that, that say we're watching or we're listening in what town that they might be in. gives us some indication of just how we're, we're reaching out with this venture into the media ministry. Well, this is Wayne Duncan saying the good Lord willing and the saints don't rise. I'll see you right here next week on Victory for Today.